now. So I kind of realized that there's even a nicer way to explain that. It, it really, the, the way this works is pretty similar to the way Grover search algorithm works. It, it kind of uses the same principle, which if you take a look at the videos that I that I have about Grover's algorithm, it's like, you know, yeah, positive uncertainty, negative uncertainty, and those things, they, you know, they tend to then, because you're unbalancing that that negativity by, by flipping the face uh, for the state that you're looking for uh, into superposition, then when, when you're trying to go back, when you're trying to interfere, now I, I, I kind of learned the term thanks to Craig. So it's like, I couldn't find the right word for that. I was calling, you know, kind of creating uncertainty and then going back to the certainty. So it's like, that's what you use Hadamard for. You, you basically, um, you're, you're, you're interfering the, I'm, I'm missing sort of the nice, nice way of explaining that, but with the Hadamard gate, you create uncertainty and then you, you pack it back. So you're, you're making those, the, 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 the different, the amplitudes of the different solutions interfere. So they cancel out and, and you're kind of, this is what you're kind of doing here. So, and basically in the first portion here, you're, you're flipping the phase for those particular solutions that, you know, they're going to minimize your uh, cost function. Uh, because of that, you translate the problem. And then once you have that, then you apply these rotations, which basically what they do is they, um, they, they act almost like a Hadamard, so to say, right? That's kind of the idea, but you're parameterizing the angle you're, uh, so you're, what you're doing is you're, um, you're playing with the amplitudes. I mean, how to explain that nicer? I mean, you're, you're rotating between the zero and the one in a way that um, in, in, in a way that you're kind of the, the, the amplitudes, because you flagged some of them and now they are kind of negative uncertainty, so to say, they'll interfere and they'll cancel out the ones you didn't flag. Sort of, I still find it complicated to explain. Um, and by the way, I also kind of realized that you don't need this. You don't need this and you don't need this, at least here, because you can just do that. It's way more compact. So you can do a conditional, you can condition that. So and it's a way more compact and Oh, wait a second. It doesn't really do the same. Does it? Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't really do the same. Okay, I'll have to, I'll have to fear that I, why I thought it I thought because I thought they were equivalent to controlled rotations but that's then hmm. Hmm. Ah, but maybe the problem here is that you have the face kickback and maybe you don't want to have that. Because you've got a one and a zero, right? You want to, uh, you want to add that face, but here you're, you're in this case, when you have like a one and a, uh, like a zero and a one, Ah, I know why this doesn't work. This doesn't work because it ignores this, the possibility where this is a one and this is a zero. And in this case, the rotation doesn't happen. So you don't want that. Correct. Okay, that's that's good to know. So this is important. So it's not the same. This is important that it is built this way. It's not a control Z. It's, uh, so the trick here is you're, you, because you have to cover what you want to make sure that you, you do a rotation of the face in for both cases where this is zero and one and this is one and zero 
right? So if this is one and zero, the controls here won't be activated. But because this is already a one, then you will be able to rotate the phase. If you have like, because uh, the, the phase rotation only acts on on a, on the state one. Um, but if this is a one and a zero, you still want you still want to add that phase, right? Um, and that's why you're negating this. So you're applying a controlled. Uh, you turn that temporal into a one, you flip the, you, you rotate the face, and then you, you kind of switch it back to zero. So that's the, that's the idea, but you've already rotated the face. Okay. So it must stay like that. Cool. Um, so, okay, let's try to, let's try to scratch the surface here. Um, when choose the method of some regression algorithm and conduce variables kind of room the consequences of two parts. The first one embeds a graph into a circuit using the Takagi position, and the second is a variational circuit which solves the MaxCAD problem. Okay, so the first part basically encodes the encodes the graph. So it's a bit different in this sense. The method because uh, they do the graph encoding directly. Because here you do it by building it like that. Being processed, and blah, 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 because the papers to take hands on approach to optimization problems and This type of problem has already been researched both for discrete and quantum annealing. In particular, we can see the solution to the Maxica problem on weight graphs. We embed a graph into quantum state and then we optimize the parameterizable part of the circuit as a well known, well chosen cost function. Related work, acknowledgments, organization, theoretical framework, representation of a graph as a quantum state. That's probably going to be critical to understand. Uh, B, so let G, W be a weighted graph with vertices and edges. Um, and then the weights, OK. Attended each edge between vertices i and j, a real number. We set 0 if there is no edge connecting. OK. That's important to know. We write an adjacency matrix. So we write A for the weighted adjacency, adjacency matrix. That is the set of, OK, so the matrix, because uh, then I'll be able to go back to the code and understand that a little bit better. So now I, now I, OK, the adjacency matrix being the matrix where each element is the weight of the connection. So if it's a zero, it means there's no connection between between those two nodes. OK. And the matrix is kind of a state created by a question kind of circuit. We match uh, we can We can either calculate it directly. Uh, so then we match A with a Gaussian covariance matrix, when, whatever that means. We can either calculate it directly or perform the Takagi decomposition. Uh, So they'll basically use the, they use whatever. Okay. So either that or at the Kagi decomposition. Let's take a set of which is then okay. So. Um, the composition. Is that cool? And the diagonal and the prime description of state matrix B. Better weighted graph described by a distance matrix B in a circuit. We do not need to calculate the covariance matrix. It's enough to perform the calculus matrix, which is given by the equation one, and to set the parameters to the, of the gates accordingly. What is equation one? Oh, that's occasion. Okay, that's this here. Um, the diagonal matrix with elements the i, which are the eigenvalues of b. Okay. I'll probably have to do some rethinking here because that seems a bit. And what is u? Matrix u. See figure one. Where is figure one? You. Where is figure one? F 
fields are not numbered. That makes it difficult. Um, so I don't know what U is, and then the S's are squeezing gates. Okay. Um, this explicitly. Okay, so basically this constructs this something that represents the graph, which I still don't fully understand. And the max cut problem. Um, List the presentation can express the bit of the cut as this set of edges, circuit design. For simulating the circuits, we use strawberry fields library. For training the parameters, the QMLT. First, you embed the graph and then you use, and then you find the solution in the graph. So, this is so this first part is what we saw, and then this. Uh, here's figure two. The circuit used to perform the optimization, the initial squeeze gates, and the interferometer create the quantum state associated with the graph. This and this. Subsequent operations are parameterized with the exception of the interferometers and optimized C2.3. So, kind of the recipe is you create a distance matrix, rescale it so the eigenvalues are between 1 and minus 1. Uh, perform the calculated composition, take diagonal elements of the matrix D. Mm -hmm. Correspond to the initial squeezing of each mode. The matrix U corresponds to. You can check out the other videos that I did in the Xanadu stuff if you really are not familiar with that, because I am really just touching the the surface of this continuous quantum continuous variable quantum computing. Um, the second part of the circuit is based on the architecture proposed in eleven. An interferometer, a layer of squeeze gates, a second interferometer, a layer of displacement gates. Okay, so this is the squeeze layer, the displacement layer, and then a layer of displacement gates and a layer of non Gaussian gates, either Kerr or cubic phase gates. So the NG are non Gaussian, it can be either Kerr gates or, but it's still really. Uh, the squeezing displays and non-gas gates are parameterized, and the parameters of the interferometers have been fixed. We have done this in order to limit the number of parameters that need to be. And, uh, oh, everything is initialized with random numbers. Mm. Solution encoding. We decided to use photon count as the output of the circuit. Hence, the output of each Q mode could be, in principle, an integer from zero up to infinity. However, in the simulation were limited by the cutoff dimension. So values for Q modes were capped at this value. In most cases, it's equal to 17. But for some simulations, we needed to lower this number to nine due to memory constraints. Binary encoding is sufficient since we divide nodes into two groups. This is why we decided to treat output of zero as zero and all non-zero outputs as ones. Yeah, but then, then what's the point of using continuous? <laughs> okay. But what's the point of using that versus the discrete quantum computing? Isn't there a disadvantage, actually, if you do it like that? Because you're kind of using a lot of your encoding space to just encode one thing. Other encodings are also possible, for example, using homodyne measurements and encoding zeros and ones in negative and positive values of position or momentum. Training algorithm, experimenting results, training parameters, influence of non-Gaussian gains. Um, this is training how parameters at different gates evolve, and more specifically, how non-Gaussian gates influence the simulation. Um, but still, what I'm missing here is the squeeze gap magnitude does vary during the simulation, but does not converge towards any specific value. The parameter phase vary only a little. That is, with the displacement gate, the phase parameter is less important than the magnitude. It's entirely constant throughout the entire training for simulation. It's a small change in the value of this parameter that can be seen in figure 7 comes from regularization. This is in conjunction with the fact that the results with and without Kerr gate are very similar. The current gate does not participate at all in the competition of an all. Uh, yeah, but cubic phase gate, the cubic phase recovery does change during the training, but its behavior is much less consistent. Most often it just changes during the training, but sometimes converges to a specific values. 
it, it seems as if there hasn't been any reasoning behind how the circuit is built, but probably there has. It's just, um, Um, we present the set as a list, okay. Because I, you're, so you're, you're counting photons at the end as a measurement. And uh, I, I don't know where that is coming. So there's a bit of reasoning behind how you encode that, but then the rest of the circuit is kind of, it feels, it feels like they're just playing with a possible parameterized thing. And they're saying, oh, this gate works better, this gate works better. And then they try to find what is the best circuit configuration. Squeeze, curve gates, cubic phase, influence of the embedding. In the setup that we have proposed, we can omit the embedding part of the circuit and use only the variational part. This means the variational part will act on a vacuum state instead of a state corresponding to a graph. quantum circuit as a machine learning model. We also wanted to check if our circuit can be trained as a machine learning model, if it can be trained using one set of graphs and then generalized to solve graphs that has that have not been presented before. Um, okay, that's nice though. So, okay, conclusions. In this study, we have created the framework for solving the Maxcap problem using photonic quantum circuits. We have checked its performance for graphs up to six nodes, and we have checked how using different gates affects the training process of parametric circuits. Importantly, we compare the performance of this optimization method where only Gaussian gates were used versus uh, one where non-Gaussian gates were, were added based on the results. Of, so I'm gonna check the different, because I think, the, I think the, some of those things they've played with here are in different branches of the code. But I don't see, what I don't see in here is I don't see an actual reasoning on why that particular setup. Maybe I just have to read that section more carefully. Like, so the preparation kind of, there, there is some reasoning here in the preparation, but which I don't fully understand, but there's some kind of reasoning on how this is encoded and, and so forth. But other than that, how, so the max cut problem, the maximum cut is the cut of maximum weight, so the max, Yeah, a cut is a petition S V minus S no vertex set into sets S and yeah. We can represent the set S as least S and S and minus one, where N is this and then S I is zero or one with the representation. So that literally is again using the same I uh, think that's basically using the same concept that than with the other QAO example where it's like you're representing basically each of the vertices and then you're saying whether it belongs to group one or group zero. Mm. But here there's a logic in which you design that because you know that you, what you want to do is you're, you're shifting, you're flipping the phase, you're flipping the phase where, you know, where where you have a zero or and a one or a one and a zero, because you want those solutions to be found. And you want the one that has the highest probability to be found, because it will have the 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 kind of my reasoning is it will have the biggest phase shift of all. That's kind of my 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 more or less intuition, right? And then with the, by applying these rotations, you're gonna you're interfering those the, the the amplitudes of the solutions, and so the one that has the biggest phase is the one, uh, the one that is going to be found, statistically speaking. But here, I don't see I don't see that reasoning circuit design. So here they talk about the encoding, correct? But then they say circuit design for simulating the circuits. We use the strawberry field library and training parameters, blah, blah, blah. Our circuit consists of two parts. The first one is associated with embedding the graph in the circuit, correct? The second one is used for finding the solution, figure two. It's this one, yeah. We perform the embedding using the following procedure according to section 2.1.2. Ah, so there is a sec. But this is the explanation of the Takagi decomposition, right? 
or is it Let's take a set of n squeezed states with a squeezing parameter followed by an interferometer described by a matrix U. If the matrices meet the condition, where these are diagonal matrix with elements di, which are the eigenvalues of P, and the diagonal R, e, the R10, that's the, the tangent, whatever. I, then the probability distribution of such a state depends on matrix B. Therefore, if we want to embed a weighted graph described by a distance matrix, we do not need to calculate the covariance matrix. It's enough to perform the characterization, which is given by the equation 1. Okay, there are two restrictions matrix B. has a symmetrical... And it must be okay. Yeah, but that still explains these, but it doesn't explain the next steps. Create a distance matrix A of the given graph. Rescale the matrix. So up to step three is, is the first two columns, like the first two layers. Right? Christmas the matrix is covered in the format applied to the squeezed modes. No, no, the second, ah, uh, okay, here they explain. The second part of the circuit is based on the architecture proposed in 11. Oh, so I probably have to go, okay. Continues our quantum neural networks. Ah. So they just take a quantum neural network architecture to do that. So there's no further reasoning. Okay, so but I, I probably should check that one next. Sorry, let me just open it there. Again, in a separate tab. Um, Okay, so they basically use an existing architecture and they try to apply it to this problem. Um, and then they just play with the gut types of gates. Okay, where was I? Here, it consists of an interferometer, a layer of squeeze gates, a connected interferometer, a layer of displacement gates, and a layer of non Gaussian gates, either curved gates or cubic face gates. Squeezing displacements and non Gaussian gates have been parameterized and parameters and blah, 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 blah. our numbers. So they don't really explain here. It's just like, okay. This, but it has not yielded benefits. So this is more like, okay, let's, so we'll just, we'll just pick up a, uh, an existing architecture and then see if it helps us solve the problem. Gaussian, whoa. 11, this is what we're looking for. Continuous variable quantum neural networks. 21 pages. We'll probably scan through these things quickly. The displacement gates, the, the, the squeezing gates, the, uh, this is beam splitting gates. Uh, okay, and here you've got like the layer thing. Okay. Get it. So I'm I'm gonna read I'm gonna do that. I, I, I keep saying it's gonna be the last video, but it's not. <laughs> I'm gonna do another one. I'm I'm really curious about that. I would sort of intuitively understand that architecture first, and then I'm probably gonna be happy. Um because it's basically they use that architecture to figure it out. Okay. To see if it solves the mask the max cut problem as well. Okay, fair enough. Cool. I'll just bookmark that. I mean I know it's reference eleven. Perfect.